I'm not that cool, so I don't go that often, but um, I live in Uptown, so every cliche place you go down uh, to Uptown, I was there. Now I live in a diner, so there's lawnmowers and babies and soccer moms, and I'm trying to figure it out, so... Uh, it's, it's <laughs> I was, he's the oldest guy here, it makes sense. <laughs> Next question. Do you like dinosaurs? <laughs> you know, it's funny you said, I'm a huge fan. Two guys? Twice No, not twice Sarah. he's awesome. <laughs> For real, no one can think of a single question about the bats, right? What's the end of the Boom, go. <laughs> What, with that? <laughs> <laughs> she that? Yeah. Yep. Oh, we got one. <laughs> no, she's sweet. She's just insane. Go ahead. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. What's it like kissing on camera? Oh. I didn't have a lot of that, unfortunately. How many times do you kiss on camera, Mike? One. The day I got done, actually. Right? <laughs> I can't stop. You can still watch. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, when I went on the show, my, when I, the one thing I had said, I was like, I'm going to make out with her as soon as possible, and I'm going to keep making out with her as much as I can. And so, well, I realized that was a poor idea when I was watching it, and I did this. I was like, oh my god, that's terrible. I was like, I do this thing with my hand, and her face, and that's... So what they do is they, they use this, like, there's eight cameras around you when you're making out, and there's obviously a hot tub involved. So, when you're doing this, they take all the different angles, so it looks like eight different kisses, but it's the same kiss yeah. with eight different cameras. They so it looks like my hand is doing this for a minute and a half, and I hated it. I've never touched a woman's face since, I promise you. You know what I'm talking about? No, I, I, no. Uh, that was horrifying. What was the last date you went on on the show? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh. <laughs> uh, the zip lining day, this is years ago now, but uh, on Julian's season we went to Canada and in Whistler, I didn't know where we were. We literally got to do like 13 or 14 different, you know, 700 foot zip lining all through the mountain. And I had never done it, so I freaked out. That was insanely fun. Yeah. And the cot, well, the cot challenge, that's more than the big that was the worst experience in my life. It wasn't. He was the best. I honestly, had all the guys here was easily the best at cop. I, I went home after that challenge. Yeah, that, that doesn't support what I said. What do you do all day? Drink alcohol. <laughs> I, I really was trying to make something else up. But like, here's the thing: you don't have internet, TV, radio, books, you can't, no cell phone, you can't talk to, you know, your family or friends, nothing, so you just, you know, you really kind of date men, really. No, I right. hang out. <laughs> and what am I gonna ask you That was not going where I planned for it to. Uh, but, you know, and you also, since you don't have any of those things, if you don't have a date, you have usually like two to three full days of just sitting in a room, like a holding area. Well, you know, typically uh, a really nice place, hotel, or whatever it is. But yeah, so literally, we just kind of play drinking games or, or drinking games, and then when we get done with the drinking games, you just drink socially. No, <laughs> go back to the drinking games. No, it's true. When you're in the house, you have no TV, books, internet, phones, music, nothing. So it's like a room of food and alcohol, and that's what you have. And then you're, you're forced, you're literally forced, to talk about your feelings eight times a day. As a man, that's terrifying. So, like, when you see these sappy dudes being like, I'm in love, because they've been asked 8,000 times that day and they're just caving to the police. <laughs> Ryan, yes, Ryan. Ryan. What's one memorable moment that happened that wasn't shown on TV? Ooh. <laughs> Michael. From, which, from, from either Pat or Bachelorette? Either one. Mm. Uh, I got it going. There was a guy on our season, again, this is dating in a while, but there was a guy on our season named Brad, B-Rad we called him, he was like 28, he had a little crazy behind his eyes, and you guys know this by now, right, like, it's 25 guys or girls, but, and 20 of them are great, they're totally normal people, but 5 of them are not dateable people, so, that's mean, but it's true, like, they let on some crazies, you know this, you know this, so, Brad was one of these crazies.
amazing. Like, as soon as you met him, he was like, hey guys. <laughs> really weird. So, Brad got lit out of his tree and just hammer drunk on one of the dates. And we were in the limo going back to the mansion, and he starts talking to Jillian. And there's like 10 other guys in the limo, and he just scoots on up there and he's like, hey, Jillian. And we're like, mm. And he starts, he says two things that didn't air that were all the we were laughing so hard. He, first, he was like, this is a little awkward. He was like, Jillian, everyone said that you've got small boobs, but I love your boobs. <laughs> Boobs. And like, oh my god! Yeah, it was awful. And then next thing he followed that up with, how much did you get paid to be the bachelorette? And we were just like, oh. So like, and really the, the big scheme of that is stuff like that happens. You know, we're supposed to be the most eligible man in America. You know, so much. They have tons of footage of us just being. No, really, you know, but Brad is the king of that one. Did you go home week two? Yeah, yeah. So if you go home night one, by the way, oh, she's got a hand up. That's wonderful. So um, if you go home night one, we refer to what do we, we call them night waters. So like they they're like less cool in the bad sort of family. That's is Brad a night one? What? Night. No, night it's a night two or okay. Which is the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. What are the rose ceremonies really like? Mm. <laughs> no, they're not anything that you think. Oh, you want to do it? Terrible. Yeah. Do the okay. night one. So, okay, night one. Night one is uh, probably the worst experience of your life. So, you ever seen, like, um, you know when, like, a girl gets dumped the first night and she is bawling and you judge her and you're like, what a pathetic little girl. <laughs> She's crying. She just met him. Like, what a loser. Have you guys thought that before? Yes, you have. All right, we're all awful. So, imagine this, you get called six months earlier, you're in the casting process, it's like the biggest thing of your life. So you're like going through like phone interviews, and then like in-person interviews, and videos, and all this stuff. And you're building up to this. Then you buy $8,000 worth of new clothes, because you might make it the whole way, so you want a whole new wardrobe. And then you're expected to be the man of your dreams. So it's 9.30 in the morning, there's black cellophane over the windows, you're three sheets to the wind, and the guy that you've been thinking about for six months just dumped you. Night one. You might cry a little bit. You may have like a bad day. So just think about it be a little more, uh, yeah. Understand from, from the guys want to do it, and actually, you got Ryan's here from Deanna's season, who's now my sister in law, but Deanna <laughs> told me this about your guys' season as well, and it was true for mine. Again, we, the, night one, you know, it's like the cocktail party, you show up and meet her and whatever. Uh, we show up at what, 9 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock? That rose ceremony ends at about 5.30 in the morning. So you're there for an, you know, forever. And the producer's like, here's a drink. Here's a drink. Did you want a drink? Did you want a drink? Yep. There's a yep. drink. Yep. So yep. everyone is hammered. Yep. Honestly, on my season, there were dudes that were already hungover. They weren't even drunk anymore. They were now <laughs> like puking in the bushes. Being like, I don't care if I get a rose. Get me out of here. I got to my hotel at 9.30 in the morning. Yeah, it's like completely ridiculous. It was awful. Yeah. So it's not... Scripted? Scripted. Uh, no, but there's an important distinction. Script is like, you know, we read something and it's like, yes, I love Jillian. That's not the case. <laughs> but clo it's close to that. So it's very produced. It is not, we're not actors. They never give us lines to say, you know, on paper. But they do say like, how was that date? Say something like this. I think that climbing a bridge is like relationships. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's so true, that's so true. But you always have the option to say that or not say it, you know what I mean? They're very guiding questions, yeah, they know what you're doing. Yeah. So the how does it feel to be falling in love in Iceland? <laughs> I don't know if I'm in love. No, you're in love, so no, tell no, me how I'm in love. No, no, I'm not sure. You're like, you are in love? Proclaim it to the world. No, that's that's very that's very The other thing that's worth mentioning is in the on the Bachelor, the Bachelorette, they get twelve hundred hours of footage between all the cameras and over the shoot schedule, and what airs are twenty hours. So let's just twelve hundred hours, twenty hours. So they can kinda, you know, weave and, and make things happen how they see fit. So do the producers have a say in who stays till the end? Like can they keep like a crazy for <laughs> Uh, well, I have one very specific thing to say. You go first. Well, uh, well, but if anybody can take this, I'll kill you. I <laughs> yeah, I mean that. 
So, uh, so the, the contract reads that the producers have the final say in who stays and who goes. But I will tell you that they will not make you get rid of somebody you like. But let's say after night one, Ben kept like 18 girls. You think he in the back of his head was like, I could very well marry 18 of these girls. Like, I have no idea. They're all so wonderful. No, he knew that half of them were crazy. So <clears throat> what happens is he might be like, oh, I love eight of these girls, but I'm, I don't know what to do with the rest of the eight people I can keep. And that's where the producers, I think, have an influence. Um, They'll never make you send home somebody that you actually like, but how can you know about 18 people after night one? You have no idea. So they help guide you in that sense. Why did you go on the basketball? What was the what? Why did you go on the basketball? It's Michael Starr for attention. He loves the theme. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Camera hungry. Uh, I got nine. I was bartending in New York at the time, and I worked with some bartenders that were fabulous, and they were like, you know what you should do? You go on that track. And I was like, oh, not on anymore, so... Like, no, yeah, you should die. Don't submit me, don't, please, seriously, don't. And they did. And then I got a, casting, uh, a call from the casting director the next day at like 8 a.m. And then it was, my, I had like a two and a half month casting process to get on. So. Really? Yeah. Two and a half months? months? That's like a year, I'm like six months. That's insane. That's half of a year. <laughs> you know what else what I will point out about being six months long? You know how like there's always one or two people every season that comes on, they have like a girlfriend or a boyfriend, they're like the worst person in the world, and you hate them? Bentley. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's the actual deal. Woo! Somebody likes no, no, that? No, that was a pie. Oh, that was a poop. Oh, okay. That sounded very excitable. Um, so what what the deal is is like I got a call in August and it didn't start filming till March. So imagine you're gonna call me like, well, we're thinking about you may, may be qualified, but I have no idea, you could be a loser, I'm not sure. So like, let's figure it out. And then it takes eight months to figure out if you're actually gonna be on the show or not, like you're living your life, so you may or may not meet somebody on the way. And then all of a sudden they're like, yep, we want you. And you're like, well, I just met this girl a month ago. What the heck do I do? Good job. Thank you, I was trying to, you told me I swear. So, uh, so that's how it happens. To be honest, do you guys remember Frank from my season? Yeah. He left Allie? Okay, we, do we like or hate Frank? Yeah, I want to We hate Frank? Like Who likes Frank? He's okay. Okay, there's Some six hands. Who hates Frank? <laughs> Alright, well, okay, half of you don't care, but what I'm going to tell you is that Frank went through the six month casting process and he met a girl a month before he went to film. Got the call and he was like, I don't know what to do. And the producers were like, you got to go, you're an idiot if you don't come. And then he went on the show and dated Allie, and the whole time he thought about Nicole, who he had met, met like three weeks earlier. So like you get how like the predicaments happen. It's a long drawn out process. Um, you think you decide overnight that you don't. Just like uh, what's her name, em Emily? Uh, Maynard. No, 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 no. Casey, the other Casey, who had, had the boy that she couldn't get rid of. Right, that was like sad. it was sad. Anyways, that's what happens. So be nice. You guys are so judgmental, all of you. Look at your eyes. Uh, I think one more question, right? Are we... Michael, will you accept this role? Oh. <laughs> Is that John Michael? Yep. John Michael! Okay, so, back to Pam's family. Yep. You seemed very calm when you found out the information, and I don't know how you did not just... Oh, that's right. I forgot what air. I don't know how you didn't jump. I was waiting for some kind of slog to go, yep, Blake got punched in the face. I'm happy now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I would lie if I said that wasn't running through my mind, obviously, that just, you know, I don't think, A, I could really put the blame on Blake, honestly, right, like, he doesn't really owe me anything, he's another dude and he wants to date Holly, sure there's a respect issue, but, you know, maybe he doesn't owe me that respect, you know, Holly, on the other hand, like, uh, that, that was pretty awful, so, to be totally honest, what I was honestly thinking was, this is the worst, and she's awful, and that sucks. But I was also in the middle of the biggest part of the game, and I don't, you know, want to sound like a sellout. But my team strategy was based on Holly and I looking like a good team, right? So for me to sit there and be like, "Holly, oh, you're the worst. I hate you." Like, no one's going to vote for us at that point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah, please believe me. I got off camera, and I was so I was crushed. I was so mad. I couldn't even talk to anyone. It didn't even feel like I won at all, honestly. I called my parents, I was, uh, we shot right down the street from where my brother and Deanna live, 
And I called him up and I was like, yo, can you come over? Like, I don't even feel like I want. So he brought me, you guys know what in and out is? Yeah. Sure. He brought me like 30 pounds of in and out. And I was just like, ah, that was the word. So yeah, that's how you know. So it was, uh, if I appeared calm, that's great. I, I was not on the inside. I was well, dying. we like you more, Michael. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Yes, one more question. I've got a little factoid for you. Oh! Yeah, I really want to share with you. Do you guys know that Michael break dances? Oh, no.